So I'll start by saying a lot of my um, approach to this room was really informed by my experience of working in newsrooms for almost 30 years before I came to Stanford. And anyone who's either seen a movie about a newsroom or been in an actual newsroom knows that for decades they were horribly designed. The, the physical layout had no connection to the value of communication and workflow. So they were really terribly designed places and I sort of experienced for a lot of my career the downside of not connecting physical st structure with what you really want to achieve as a creative product. The course I teach in here in the fall is called Public Issues Reporting. So we're exposing our students, both graduate and undergraduates, to, um, first of all, the importance of public affairs reporting. And under that are things like accountability journalism, investigative journalism, um, doing the things that don't necessarily get monetized anymore. Um, and, and so we do that in a combination of ways. One is traditional classroom learning, where people are sort of learning about um, philosophy and skills. But then at the core of it is a very practical class. So the students, when they arrive here, they take on and propose a news beat in one of the two counties around Stanford. So they're covering cities or areas of the counties in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties. And so by doing that, they're being real field reporters, but they're also learning in class lessons that they can apply to the practical. So the things that I look to do in the room is, first of all, uh, have the physical setup each class uh, comport with or match what we're trying to do for the day. So there might be times that we're actually the classroom looks more like a newsroom because the reporters are working together in clusters, uh, coming up with ideas or communicating concepts. And then the cluster might interact with the screen to communicate to the entire room. There are times when it's, it looks and feels like a newsroom uh, and we're, we're setting up the desks and using the screens in that format. There are other times where um, I'm using the screens to impart information and have discussions. So in that standpoint, we set up the room to be more focused to the screens, but also can seamlessly move from the first hour, we're looking at the screens, we're talking about things, and then we say, okay, now let's reconfigure and we're gonna have a discussion and we'll take two minutes break, we'll reconfigure the desk, and all of a sudden the discussion is going on and we still have reference points for the room. I also feel it's real important to be able to make the discussions as interactive as possible. And that's where I like to use multiple screens at times. So let's say I'm gonna start off by um, referencing work that the students are doing, but then showing new concepts. So I might have one screen up that looking at the Peninsula Press, which is our multimedia news site where all of our student work is published. So that would be a screen where we're talking about maybe a particular article that one of the people in the room have done. And then I'm going to springboard from that article to say, well, let's look at some concepts that you can learn from, and I might call up um, a professional site like the New York Times or the San Jose Mercury News and say, well, let's look at how the New York Times approached the same type of story but from a different angle. And then I might have prearranged to have the journalist from the New York Times who worked on that story want to come into the class through Skype. And then you have that person on the screen. And then you have opportunities where we're looking at our actual work, the, the professional journalist work, and then there's the professional reporter in the room. You're talking to someone who up until probably four years ago would have to like beg friends to come over to my house to like connect my DVD player to my TV. So I am completely um, the opposite of a tech wizard. Uh, but what I do have is, um, guts and, and, and uh, sort of a uh, weird uh, lack of the gene of fear of failure. 
So uh, I guess I begin with three things. One is to be able to admit your shortcomings right from the beginning and say, okay, this is not my thing, but I am open to learning how to demystify it. So I am someone who says, okay, I realize that it's not my natural tendencies to be tech inclined, but I know that they're experts and I don't want to be narrow minded and say, I'm just not going to try to see what I can do. So the first thing I will do is seek out the expert and say, show me what this is. And often what ends up happening is that you realize, actually, it's not as complicated as you think. Let me learn enough about it to know what were things that I could actually learn to do and to do with some competence. And what were the things that, let's be honest, were going to be beyond me. So that was my first approach. And I actually realized when I started to understand this room, it was much easier than I thought it would do. So the second thing that I brought to it is um, I'm a big believer in, the, in a quote that I heard years ago, and I remember to this day. And the quote is, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So I always try to make sure before I do something live in a class that I've had a dress rehearsal. The students, I find, are so much more technologically savvy than I am. And so it really does reverse the, relate, the power relationship between lecturer, professor, and student. So I try to always pick out, here are the three students in the room who are going to bail me out. And so on election night last year, we covered about eight of the California ballot initiatives. We covered a local angle of the presidential election, and we covered about four different local elections that had broader significance. So each of those coverage teams were the spokes feeding the hub. That this is a wonderful resource, and you know, if you feel like you're in a comfort zone, force yourself out of it, because I, I feel like even with the experimental stuff I've done, I've just like hit the tip of the iceberg, and that there's so much more to be done in this space, and it's just a wonderful opportunity.